What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Stand Up SJ Square Photography, bringing you back another tutorial video today. Now, what we're going to be learning a bit today in Affinity Photo on the iPad version, we're going to learn how to change the background. And if that's something that you really want to learn, well, got to watch this video. Now, let's run that new intro. <laughs> Before we get started, uh, let me go ahead. I partner with Soundstripe. That's where I get all my music for my YouTube uh, videos. So if you want to use it, please hit the description down below. Not the description, sorry, the link down below. Check them out. And if you like them, sign up, use the music. They are absolutely awesome. So let's just go ahead and get right into this. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change, I'm gonna show you how to change the background. Now this, uh, actually this video came for, from a request from one of the subscribers, one of the family that's on here that asked me to show them how to change the background. Now, uh, changing the background in portrait photography is very, very something that you don't do a lot, unless it's like a sky, because sometimes that background is telling the story within the photo. So a lot of times, you know, as portrait photographers, we don't change the background. We really don't need to change the background uh, as much as, you know, as we do, unless you're really into like, you know, doing composites and things of that nature. But, um, you know, the background is usually, usually, you know, for storytelling and, 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 and general nature and, you know, trying to just it really depends. So you really don't change the background, but I'm going to do it uh, because he asked me to show him how to do an infinity photo on the iPad. So I'm going to do this today. So as you see, I got this photo right here. Uh, this is a headshot uh, section that I did outdoors. Uh, I got a video coming up about that. So please check that out when it comes out. So let me go ahead and show you how to do it. First, we're going to go to the smart selection. Well, of course, as usual, we always want to duplicate your layer, which I've already done. And then we're going to go to smart selection. Uh, once again, I'm just going to be doing a rough sketch of this. I'm not really going to be really precise uh, just to kind of show you and trying to make this video as quick as possible. So I don't want to really be precise. of trying to do this, you know, just trying to get the point across um, as effectively and thorough as possible within the amount of you know time of to keep your attention, to be honest. Um, so here we go now this we got this the hair is one of the things that you really want to make sure you do select and really refine when you get to go to this process uh, and of course you got the soft edge you want to make sure you want to click on the soft edges to soften up the measures especially around the hair because it's going to be very important when you want to change the background so let's go ahead and hit refine mask uh, let's just go over the hair parts a little bit more here uh, just to kind of you know get that background out as much as possible all right, that's over and done with. Now you want to go to output. What you want to do is you want to go to new mask. Click on new mask. It's going to go ahead and run this process. All right, so now that is done, we can go ahead and cut that off. You can see that is now completely done. Now what you want to do from there is you want to hit this plus sign and you want to go to fill. There it is. Um, if you want to change the color, here's the color wheel. You can change the color to whatever you really want to does not make a difference what color you want to change it. I'm going to use it on that light blue. I kind of like that color. And now what you want to do is you want to grab that layer and bring it below, you know, the pixel selection layer you just did. And there you go with the, the change background. Very, very simple. Now, what we got to do now is make it seem a little bit more like, you know, it's supposed to be like it was taken in the studio with that color back with a color backdrop. So what we want to do now, we're going to go back, click on hair. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to this FX button right here. And then we're going to hit the out of shadow. This is going to do exactly what it says. It's going to make an out of shadow of her, which is what we selected. So let's go here. Turn up the intensity. As you can see, there's an out of shadow going, going on out. Let's just go and cut that intensity so you can really see it. There's the out of shadow. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn down that intensity because we really don't want it that high. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna offset it. So you gotta pay attention to where your light source is coming from. That's where your key light. My key light was camera right, I believe. So therefore the shadow is gonna be more on the left side of this photo here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offset it a little bit. And then after you offset it a little bit, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change the angle, okay? Now I still want a little bit on the right side, of course, but I want it mainly on the left side here. 
So I'm just gonna change that angle just a tad bit. And then I'm gonna go back in here, play with the offset just maybe a tad bit more. And then you can really go in there and mess with, you know, your radius to make it how big or how small you really want to, just to give it that little, that little depth. It's just really creating depth is what it's doing. And of course, like I said, you're in a studio, unless you're, unless, if you got a one light setup, it's pretty much you're gonna get, create a shadow regardless. Even just a tad bit of shadow. Um, unless you know you got a, a light behind the model and you're blowing that out, then of course it's gonna be completely plain. But if you wanna do it that way, then don't use out of shadow. Uh, just use it plain just like that because you can get something similar to that. But I'm gonna keep it with the natural because I think it kinda, not the natural, but I'm gonna keep it with this because I kinda like it with this situation here. Okay, so now after you get finished done with that, what you wanna do is to really tackle the hair is as you can see, it's kind of soft around the edges, which is good because that's what we wanted to click with soft around the edges because it helps blend in with the background a little bit better. But of course, if it doesn't still look good, what you can really do is you can go here and you can go to the blur, the blur brush, and you can just start going around and just blurring in those edges a little bit more and that will help sell the effect a little bit better. Once again, like I said, this is a mess because, you know, for tutorial purposes. So you can start doing that all around the outer of a hair, just blurring that, and therefore that effect will make it look a little bit better. Now, to take it a step further, what we're gonna do is we're gonna now add a, you know, a levels on her to make her, you know, stand out a little bit more from that background. So we're gonna make it a child layer make it levels let's just darken it up just a tad bit more just bring out the whiteness just a tad bit and then what we're going to do is since you know she's a little and that background is just a little bit too bright for me we're just going to add a gradient filter so of course if the key light is on the left side that's where most of the light's going to be at so the other side is going to be as light and it's gonna gradually, you know, get darker as we go in this situation. So, that's what we're gonna do. Let's do something of that nature there. All right. And there you have it. So that's pretty much about it. And that's how you pretty much just changed any background to any portrait. Uh, once again, um, like to change it to like another sky or another background for for instance, um, that could be done, but that's more in compositing, right? That's more like when you start to composite things of that nature, uh, which I have done before. I got a couple of pictures. Uh, if I find them, I'll go ahead and throw them up right now. Uh, I got a couple of pictures where I make composites and I like doing composites. It takes a lot of work and a lot of, you got a lot of pay attention to a lot of details uh, when you composite photos. For example, I guess since we got a little time here, let's go back. Um, if you want to have a look at some of the samples, uh, just like right here in tutorial, all these right here are, are awesome composites. And I really take you highly, you know, look at these because myself, I have looked at these before because they're really great, awesome uh, composites. I have looked at these and I went in there and I just, you know, went through and just really look at all the layers and how they did things. You know, this is how I learned, you know, how to composite a little bit better. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with, you know, just going in here and, and, you know, and looking at the samples and really learning from here as well. Just not, you know, from my tutorials, I appreciate you learning my tutorials, but it's also another awesome way to learn as well as just by going through these samples here and looking at, you know, how they're doing things. Cause I have done that before myself. There's no shame in that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed my content. If you do, please go ahead and join what I am doing on my channel and hit that subscribe button for me. And of course, and until the next tutorial video, peace.